while I was actually doing work, uh, I noticed this fitting gear is profanely leaking oil. Now it's not a big leak, but big enough leak to actually get a few drops into bucket. So probably this line or one of these fittings will be completely replaced because yeah, that's th that's a profane oil leak that actually shouldn't be there. But I'm actually packing things for a fair and let me show you what's in the trailer. So this is all the things we have in the trailer. There's an interesting belt pulley. Oh, let me get some grip. Here we go. There's some levers for a, and there's another lever for a uh, brake. Basically it's a Belarus brake, but that is for a trailer brake, which I don't have. And a bunch of steel that is going to be used for something. And in the back, I have a brand new PTO for a six blind sh shaft and for a 500 series pillar structure. Now the 800 series has certain components different despite they look the same. And also the 800 series PTO is rated for a faster, faster RPMs than the 500 series. But there's a reason why I decided not to use this PTO. And, you know, as a hoarder, I would say, well, why are you giving up this? Um, first of all, I have nothing that has six splines here. Everything I have is eight splines. Now I could use couplers, but there's a bit of a different reason, which you will be finding soon out in the video. And <laughs> yeah, basically I could use that PTO, but there's something else I need, which I've been looking for for many, many years. And I think now it's kind of, this place where I can part ways with it and have one problem less to worry about in the future. And now that PTO is fine, it, these things go for a lot of money for six, seven hundred dollars for a complete PTO. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not cheap, but you'll see in the video why. And of all my gears, the trail is loaded. So it's time to head out into the wilderness.
Okay, it's the morning. And here's the finished product. Here's the pillow structure splitting applications. Now, I'm going to explain in a future video how this works, but basically that there goes underneath the bottle jack. The bottle jack sits here and the I-beam is the frame from where you can actually, and these are arms where you can lift the tractor from the frame rails, or you don't need to need any of these and you can lift it from the torque tube bolts. So basically there's like multiple ways you can use it. If I find any good examples, I'll post the pictures down below. And now for this thing, this tailgate goes for the truck. Yes, that's the original tailgate. It's a bit hooey or kinked in the middle, but that's not my main concern. I would say I've been looking for this tailgate for 10 years and now I finally found one. I struck a deal with a friend. He got the six blind PTO for his 500 series plus project that might be covered in a future video one day, maybe, hopefully. And I'm kind of happy because this tailgate is really hard to find. It's the older style tailgate and it's, it's these are like almost all kinked, smashed. Um, yeah, it's, it took me 10 years to find one that is actually in a state where it can be restored and used. And I don't like the plywood tailgates. This actually is a solid metal one, so it's way better. Uh, I actually like it. This scaly rust isn't a problem. This probably will be sandblasted. Uh, it's it's really hard to clean it by hand. So this one is going to sandblast in the future. So I should actually start mowing the lawn because it's it's really growing on me. And uh, yeah, there's there's nothing much. But first of all, unload all of this and. I'm going to link what we did use to build this. Basically, in short, most this all my own material here that I've salvaged from different scrap yards and bought. And um, pretty much uh, we had a few leftovers, but yeah, this thing took eight hours to finish. And uh, I had to, I actually did uh, the prepping of the parts, cleaning and reassessing things and, you know, holding things still so that they are actually true. So there might be some, it's it's not a perfect thing, but I would say for what I and my friend built, this is better than his first product, prototype he had. So basically it's, yeah, we're using old uh, cultivator uh, bearings as rollers and they will work, but definitely this thing is meant not for soft ground, but for hard ground. So concrete or, or I or any kind of hard floor, but I'll manage that because I can actually build iron plate roads and move the tractor with this application back and forward. So yeah, really happy that it got done. This was supposed to be done in March, but you know what? Shenanigans happened. So uh, I'm going to actually unload everything and I'm gonna see uh, what I'm going to do with the rest of the day. I get back home pretty much at 12 o'clock, so I'm tired, but it was worth it. So let's let me unload this and then we're going to see what else I can do. And by the way, this is not 100% finished. This needs some paint work and grinding work, which I'm going to do myself. So, oh yeah, right. Yes, less yapping and more action. Okay, in order to finish something, we have to paint this thing. Now, I'm not going to use any primer or do a ton of prep work. Only thing I did is wash off all the residue from the magic sauce. And also, I'm not worried about bugs or dust. This is like, this, this is a workable unit, but since it's made mostly out of new material, I want to paint it. Of course, my paint setup isn't that great because this compressor isn't that good. I have to do some test painting before I can use it. And this is the only paint I have left. It's the only can that wasn't really rock solid from sitting for years. And for those who are interested, that's the formula. If you want to use this paint and for cleaning, I'm using this stuff. So everything I'm going to use, I'm going to actually list the description. So the goal is to get some paint on this thing. I'm not really care about the paint and the wheels because that will wear off anyway. So that is not our problem. The real issue is will that one can of paint 
make sure to paint all of these pieces like this one two three four five pieces i don't know like i'm gonna find out soon because uh, of course the weather isn't that ideal but you know what this is the only day when it doesn't rain and you know what i i just want to put the paint on and get this thing done and of course i'm using the rear hatch as to do the pre-mixture and see how the paint gun works so i guess i'll get busy and start doing something because time is of the essence right now okay, here's the first result not ideal i mean you can't paint the pitting but yeah there's a few flies but i don't mind now this one might be a bit of a problem this compressor definitely is weak not ideal and the paint gun is good but the paint needs to be thinned out more because this paint is a bit way too thick right now. I'm gonna see, I don't have much paint in there left, but maybe I can kind of suss out something and get this thing hopefully painted. This has to cure a little bit before I can turn the other side. And hopefully this will work, fingers crossed. Okay, most of this is painted. There's still some left in the paint gun, but basically, yeah, it's a rudimentary setup and some people asking why not use a paint boot I don't have one, maybe I will have one in the future, but it's almost done. I'm letting the paint cure and going to put that last patch of paint on it. I'm not going to paint those sides or the inner walls much because this is where the moving parts are. I don't think I need paint in there, but everything else seems to be good. And luckily that paint managed to just cover all the parts. I believe this color is actually what the 800 series Belarus uses and the 59 Buick engines, those have like this turquoise color and I love this color actually, so yay for me, didn't have to go to the paint shop at all. There's some few spots in there that are not painted, but I'm gonna let the paint cure and turn it the other way around and do the last patches and I think we're done with paintwork. All it needs to do is now cure. I'm going to probably take these inside and let the paint cure there fully. And while it's going there, I'm going to see, yeah, going to work on these as well and hopefully uh, everything will work out fine and here's the final product or it's in its assembled form now I hope to actually demonstrate you how it works with the bottle jack but unfortunately you can only put a 24 centimeter bottle jack in there if it's any higher you won't have clearance to actually lift anything but basically, this part here, which is secured with bolt, moves from these sides. You angle them to the subframes or frame rails. Basically, call it, I think on tractor you call them frame rails, not subframes. And these bolt holes are actually meant for the transfer case or the torque tube. So basically, underneath there, there's bolt holes you can align it with. And... I believe the 500 series has only two bolt holes you can align and the 800 has all four so yeah that's kind of it I mean the paint needs to it's mostly dry now but it needs to cure a little bit but it's finally done now and uh, I think we're going to see it, see it soon in action the only question is we're gonna have to put it on solid ground because those old cultivator bearings will sink into the ground really fast so this thing is only meant for concrete or iron or you know stable ground it's not meant for dirt so if you would like to use it on a dirt you would have to kind of invent something else for wheels but because we used the first prototype well this is kind of it what it's so no demonstrations unfortunately but you're going to see it in action with this guy over here because we need to split the tractor for a number of reasons and well, I guess this is kind of it, and I want to thank all the people that kind of directly or in indirectly supported this project, and your names are listed in this video, so they're somewhat obscured, but those people who know who they are, they'll recognize themselves. And I want to thank you all for watching this video, and hopefully this found you all useful. In the end of the video, I've also listed the pictures with all the measurements. And if you want to build one of these, what I would call split-o-matic devices yourself, you should always use your own tractor as a team plate to make sure that everything lines up. I will say this, the only difference with the prototype and with 
this device, which is now the second version of it, is the different material which is used, which is more beefed up, and it's wider for the 600 series. For the 500 series, the I-beam can be a lot shorter. So, like I said, links and all the information of the measurements is down in the description or somewhere in this video. And I hope you see you soon for when we're going to split the tractor with this one and go see it in real action. Thanks everyone. Like and subscribe. See you around soon.